Hi, and welcome to Variety Tech Today. If you're a fan of classic television, then you might enjoy this episode. We're going to take a fun look at the Henning universe. Now, what does that mean? Well, if you're familiar with old TV shows, you might remember that Paul Henning was the creator of the Beverly Hillbillies, but also of Petticoat Junction and Green Acres. These were three different TV shows with rural themes from the 1960s mostly that uh, sometimes crossed paths with each other. They were set within the same universe. So for lack of a better term, I've dubbed it Henning Universe. So let me show you what's available on home video so far and my personal collection. It all started with, in my opinion, the funniest of the three, the Beverly Hillbillies. Now, as some might know, the f complete first season of the Beverly Hillbillies and a good chunk of the second season are in the public domain, as in their copyrights uh, weren't handled properly, they expired, and so you'll find a lot of cheaply produced DVDs on the market uh, with fuzzy copies of these episodes. However, some years ago, uh, an officially licensed version of, of all those public domain episodes were released from the Paul Henning estate and this was the best way to own them. They were called Ultimate Collection, Volume 1 and Volume 2. This contained all of the public domain episodes except for the Christmas episode, which, oddly enough, was sold on a separate officially licensed DVD with a Christmas theme. But anyway, what made these better than all the other ones on the market was the fact that they were uncut, that they had a, uh, a lot of the original cast commercials, and also plenty of bonus features. However, the video quality itself was pretty bad. Video and audio quality, for that matter. However, more recently, CBS released uh, their version of the first season, and they had access to the original negatives. So this version is much clearer, and it has all the episodes, including the Christmas episode, and the cast commercials and sponsor spots. However, it's kind of nice to see both because uh, the one from the Paul Henning estate has all the behind-the-scenes extras. Then came the second season of the Beverly Hillbillies. The first season was set during the 62-63 season, so this is 63-64, and that same season, parallel with the Beverly Hillbillies, premiered the next series, Petticoat Junction. Then came season three of the Beverly Hillbillies and that same year, Season 2 of Petticoat Junction. Two things to note. These two volumes, Seasons 2 and Seasons 3 of Beverly Hillbillies, were the first ones released by CBS. They didn't bother to release Season 1, I guess because it was already flooded the market with all the cheap copies out there, besides the officially licensed ones. But then I guess they realized there was a spot to be filled because all the copies were pretty bad quality, including the official one. So then later on they came back and released the first season. The other thing to note is that these two seasons here were the last to be in black and white. The next year many shows switched over to color. Starting with the Beverly Hillbillies, the fourth season, and Petticoat Junction, the third season. That was during the 65-66 television season and also that year the third series joined the fray. Green Acres. This one was in color from the beginning due to the year it started. While the Beverly Hillbillies and Petticoat Junction were set far away from each other and hadn't yet linked up story-wise, Green Acres was set in the same vicinity as Petticoat Junction, so characters would frequently mix and match and the line was very blurred between the two. And here's the second season of Green Acres and the third season of Green Acres. Now you may be wondering, why aren't I showing you the f continuous seasons of the Beverly Hillbillies and Petticoat Junction? Well, that's because, for years, CBS hadn't released them. Now, not too long ago, the rights holders finally released the last three seasons of Green Acres, seasons 4, 5, and 6, and CBS also happened to release season 5 of the Beverly Hillbillies, but that's all. And at the time that I binged these shows in chronological order for the first time, not too long ago, 
even those weren't yet available. So I made myself a bootleg collection from episodes uploaded to YouTube and recorded off television. And here it is. As you notice, it's called Henning Universe 1966 to 1971. It contains seasons 5 through 9 of the Beverly Hillbillies, seasons 4 through 7 of Petticoat Junction, and seasons 4 through 6 of Green Acres. And as you can see, uh, I chose appropriately a picture from an episode where they all happened to cross over, which they did more frequently as the years went on. So after the three series ended, was that it? No, of course not. There were reunion films. First of all, there was the return of the Beverly Hillbillies. This was a very rare for many years, but recently they completely remastered it in beautiful quality and released it on DVD. And this is still owned by the estate of Paul Henning. They're the ones who released it. That movie was in 1981. And it wasn't until 1990 that the next movie came out, Return to Green Acres. This was a lot of fun. Now there was one more reunion after that, um, but it, uh, I don't help own it as a standalone DVD. It's actually included as an extra, oddly enough, on season three of the Beverly Hillbillies. And the name of that special was called The Legend of the Beverly Hillbillies. You can see it listed there in the extras. It was actually shorter than the others, only 40-something minutes. And it took the format of a mockumentary, you know, as if the Beverly Hillbillies were real people and they were being interviewed again after all these years. Buddy Epson was very elderly at the time, but we got to see him and Jethro and Ellie Mae. And this was the last entry in the original timeline for all these shows. However, that's not the very last piece of home media because there was one remake, and that would be The Beverly Hillbillies, which was made in 1993 and starred Jim Varney in the title role as a then modern day retelling of the story. So, I'll see you next time on Variety Tech Today. Y'all come back now, here. Yeah?